Hey guys, welcome to episode 19 of the 1023 Soul Shop Talk podcast. We finally, finally, Vaughn and I are on together again. And uh, a couple things I want to talk about before we start this. Our build plans. If you go to 1023diesel.com, one of the main tabs on our website, the main menu items on our website is going to be plan your build. It's not perfect. It's just a form you fill out and then you schedule a call. So it's, it's pretty basic, but that is the best way that we can help you talk through what your build is going to look like and what parts it's going to take to get the result that you're looking for. It's, there's no way that we can talk, we can, you know, post enough podcast or post enough videos or say enough on Facebook or Instagram uh, that's going to help everyone through their build. And so the reason we have this as an option where you can talk, we can, we can sit down for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. We can talk just about you and your truck and how you use it and what you're looking for is so that we can figure out what it takes to get the result you're looking for. And we can do it the first time instead of buying the wrong parts and wasting money and ending up with a terrible result because that happens a lot. So if you're looking to build your 7.3, go ahead and fill out that form. It's just 10 com. Go to the plan your build tab and fill it out. Schedule the call and let's, let's talk about your build. And with that being said, here's Vaughn. Hi, everybody. Glad to be back. As normal. He says he's back as though he's been gone, but he hasn't really been gone. He's just <laughs> been busy. And it's really hard to make a podcast together. As I've mentioned a couple podcasts ago, uh, Vaughn and I are not very good at like sitting down and recording something together because we usually get uh, way too detailed um, and it doesn't make for good material. So, um, we're going to try to find a place between there and being good, uh, on this one. And I'm going to post it either way. So just, uh, just a heads up on that one, Vaughn. It doesn't matter. Even if it's bad, we're going to post it. Cause I'm sick of recording things we don't post. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, I've been I'm definitely more of a, a writing kind of guy. So sorry you guys that like to, to listen. I know that's why you're here in the video guys, but um most of the stuff on our website at least written as far as like rules and terms and you know the details of things um have been because it's taken like i end up doing that because i find that somewhat more enjoyable it's much easier for me to get my thoughts down on paper or you know typed than it is for me to to speak them out loud which i'm sure plenty of people have realized but um i've been working some on the faq in the background uh, a few guys eventually hopefully we can get together and get something like that followed through most of you know like i go back and forth between the faq on our site right now um and i try my best to get people over there just so people know that it exists um but eventually we'll have a nice little setup but the, the problem is I, I try to go a little bit too far and um as far as like when you start into a step i end up making a full entire guide so i'd love for that to be a thing so when people I can say, oh, you have an ICP problem or you, you have this problem. Here's how you do it, right? Because a lot of people do know when they answer the phone that they can't expect me to be their entire mechanic for them. Um, so it is helpful, at least because not everybody has a good mechanic to look at 7.3s. And honestly, you know, we, we know that we can't always trust shops to look at your, your truck also um, because there are very, very specific things that, you know, can be kind of nuanced and only we may know the answer to. So, um Anyway, I, I don't want to make any promises as far as like FAQ does goes because I've been making them slightly more internal because I'm just now getting to putting down a lot of the stuff that we do every day into words as far as like parts and tuning that, you know, everybody knows I'm kind of the, the janitor of once you've already purchased your parts and then you've installed them in your truck, then what happens? You end up talking to me, right? You if come it's back either and something you, you don't like later. Yeah, it's, it's, well, maybe you shouldn't have bought that part, or maybe you should have talked to somebody about what you were doing, or, you know, that sort of maybe wasn't all right for you, or, oh, by the way, you actually do need a high-pressure oil pump, you know, I'm sorry, you needed injectors and a high-pressure oil pump, or, you know, your fuel system, well, it wasn't important for you for what you're doing, and your pump's never been replaced in 350,000 miles, 
you've never checked fuel pressure, you're going to have to do that, right? So it's always one of those things where you end up, I'm the person that ends up handling the, the cleanup of, you know, once you've gotten the parts, um, what happens after that. So um, that obviously takes up all of my day. So when I do end up getting around to, you know, writing something down, I'm usually a little bit burnt out. But um, that's the, the goal, I guess, just because I can write things down, in my opinion, much better than I can speak them. Yeah. So eventually we're going to have an FAQ and deciding how to do that. Like, like, I don't know if, if you've ever gone to a website before and you've, you're like, okay, well, I just, I just need an answer to something. Um, you're either in desperate need and you're going to call and that's fine. That's, a, that's, that's honestly for, for you, it's a good answer because, uh, there's a good chance that you can eventually talk to someone who can help you. Um, and much like I mentioned or mentioned in the last podcast, uh, or maybe it was two podcasts ago. Anyway, a, w- a little while ago, having that information easily available from us, which is why we're here and why we have such a hard time like growing, why we decided, you know, we're not going to just sell everything and why we're just going to focus on this and not hire more people so you can get an answer. But anyway, you're going to call or you're going to look for a, a simple answer uh, on, you know, a website or a, a YouTube video or whatever. And so figuring out how we want to implement that, where do we want to put uh, a question and answer page, uh, you know, an FAQ. And I think what we decided on is we're just going to use, so we have like the chat system on our website that actually has a pretty good built-in FAQ. So there's just, you know, one place you click on it. You can either ask us questions uh, directly or you can, um, you can use the FAQ that's built into it. And we, well, the FAQ that's built into the system that we're going to build. Um, and I think that's what we decided on. So hopefully that'll be pretty easy in the future. Yeah, and hopefully, I, I want to get it to a point where it's usable, like where there's articles and subsections and stuff. And I know this it's not necessary, but it, it's it's nice to have something first that at least we can rely on for each other, or it's helpful for us internally, and then make it more user friendly. Because I'm also not great at just giving just the answers, right? Not everybody needs or should know all of the details about how a certain system or how some exact thing functions because it's going to confuse them more than it helps them. So as difficult it is for me to not explain everything, um, you know, to a T, I can't, it's not always helpful for me to give everybody all of the answers because then it starts to, you know, as much as I want to help people, it doesn't always help them when you give them a bunch of info about how something exactly works because then a bunch of questions pop up that aren't necessarily relevant and it turns out the easiest thing was the was the probably the problem in the first place and once you fix that it ends up getting fixed right so Mm -hmm. that's what i want the faq to be as far as when you look for something a problem that you will have some information about why the problem can exist and then here's a solution to it something better than probably hopefully every other site you've ever been to can give you and hopefully from the best people that can give it to you, somebody that has handled all of the silly phone calls from, you know, my truck lopes when it's cold. Oh, well, that could be anything from, uh, you know, your fuel tank that's never been changed and, it's, you know, pick up or you have it parked on a hill or, um, you know, this sensor needs to work properly or you've never replaced uh, your turbo and it's leaking oil into, you know, now it's smoking. And uh, there's, there's a million reasons we could go down a that all of them are completely relevant. So just giving you enough info as to why, you know, we have seen these problems and how they can inter, uh, you know, interact with each other, you know, when you have a set of modified fuel injectors, but also, um, you know, you have a 300,000 mile truck that's down a little bit on compression. And then you pair that when it's cold with, with, uh, drain batteries. Yeah. It's going to lope for, you know, a minute or two, but it didn't with your previous tuning and your worn out sloppy injectors previously, you know, what gives. And so like, there's a bunch of reasons why something like that could be the cause or your IPR nut is loose. And so your IPR is jiggling and your ICP is bouncing all over the place. Well, why is it doing that? And you didn't notice it previously. So, well, more than likely it was doing it already. And now it's, you know, it's not a problem until you started changing things up and now it appeared. Right. Mm-hmm. So I have to, you know, you have to have a way to prove all of those things to you. 
and then giving you some help as to where to go from there because i don't not every shop in my opinion is, is equipped to handle seven threes this you know specifically especially when you start putting a bunch of modified parts in from a bunch of different companies yeah yeah and like honestly nobody nobody like really is going to be there's very few shops or people that are going to be good at diagnosing problems like random problems on a any 7.3 but especially a modified 7.3 um, in any capacity uh, as well as a a custom tuning company can that has been doing it for a while but if that custom tuning company has been doing it for a while they have also seen every problem or new problems um, every day to the point where you just realize that there is no simple answer. So when you call to get, you know, a quick answer to a problem, you know, maybe maybe sometimes you can. Maybe there's going to be a couple quick things you can look at. But, like, we can't play the game. One of, one of the biggest things, one of the things I see all the time on our front is um, guys that are calling in and they're, they've got an issue that they want an answer to, but they say, like, okay, well... You know, we'll end up with, we'll look at this, you know, look at, look at this first, um, after we've talked for 20, 30 minutes, and then, uh, we can go from there. And that's, that's hard because it's like, well, I can't commit that much time to every single person that calls because a lot of people call just because they have problems. Um, but even so, like they want to know an answer. They're like, okay, well, if not that, then what? I'm like, well, I can't answer that because we've determined that we need to start here. And I can't give you another variable because there's so many of them until we figure out what this is. We need to get this data first. And it's the same thing in tuning. Like we need to have, we need to figure out a place to start and then we need to start there and work up. And so it's very time consuming, which kind of leads to like, we are going to change some things um, from the tuning side, but I, I, we won't talk about that quite yet because we're still organizing it um, and like what we're going to offer and how we're going to offer it. But uh, I, I do think that the best di- diagnosticians are going to be tuning companies, tuning good tuners, not companies necessarily. Um, and uh, until they get to a point where they can't anymore. It's, uh, which is kind of where we're at. <laughs> you are, you are great. You are great. But, you know, where do you draw the line between being great and not being able to answer questions because there are too many variables that you understand? It becomes pretty hard. Yeah. And, and I think another difficult part of that is, uh, not to mention like every, every day I may change a little bit of something, you know, for the past two years, almost every tune that's ever left the shop has been freehand in some way, shape, or form, right? So there's always some little tweak or a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And it's difficult for me to say that. And most people listening go, oh, well, you know, that. what What do you tweak in? Or why do you need to change this? Or, you know, well, because you changed this, now my truck is this. Well, no, it's not, it's not really how this works. But because there are slight... Uh, can only come from the person that made those changes to know why I made those changes to do those things, right? And so I... Right. The, the idea of being able to scale out something like that on the same scale of somebody that's doing it every day, it's difficult for me to be able to know everything that I've done combined with all of the problems that, you know, can happen for, you know, X reason or, or you know, sensor this or this that or you're, you know, you're driving uphill towing 25,000 pounds. Oh, by the way, you know, you have a tear, torn boot or something you didn't check on and you know, all of those things can add up. And it turns out, you know, in, in this setup, I was using the map sensor in this setup, I wasn't. And so it was causing a problem in this setup, and this wasn't. And so, you know, I had my reasons when I wrote that particular file that I didn't in a different file. And so those are explanations that are not easy. And they take something slightly more specific, like knowing who you are, knowing what your truck is, knowing what you're doing with the truck. And so, um, you know, that's often why if anybody has dealt with me on the phone before or after purchase, I usually go through the rundown of 20 or more questions of, you know, why did you choose the parts you did? What are you doing with the truck completely? You know, what's the year? Have you checked compression? Have you done all of the simple stuff? 
have you checked fuel pressure? Do you know how to check fuel pressure? Do you know what fuel pressure is, right? Like all of those things have to be answered before I can even consider something, right? And I have this little excerpt on the tuning on our, on our website, on the product page, where from our perspective, you know, we have to pretend your truck is 100% in perfect condition, which everybody, you know, everybody says their truck is, but it turns out that's almost never the case, right? Um, but I have to pretend it's not only perfect, but also runs just like every other truck that I've tested, right? And if it doesn't, we need to figure out why, yeah, which makes but it the man, part. I don't know. All the people I talk to that have truck problems and they've taken their truck to a shop, they checked the ICP sensor and it's good. <laughs> and yeah, is, so is the map sensor yeah. good and so is the throttle <laughs> the problem is sensor and the, so is the back like, That sensor. doesn't mean anything. Like... I don't know. It's... Well, if you want to get into a whole thing of, like, depending on what scan tool they have and how they're reading it, like, okay, 7.3s are way different because of the years they were produced and the software that was written on them and what Ford actually was allowed to do and what they were forced to do. And then what scan tools are actually reading it, depending on what strategy is on the vehicle and how that tool is, is re- reproducing that strategy, right, from the shops that say, what are the fuel trims? Because I've had a 7.3 and it shows fuel trims on whatever scan tool they have but it's completely made up data, right? And so then what tools are actually showing proper data when when some strategies for later model trucks show throttle position from zero to 50% and some show it from 14 to 70% and some show it from this or that, right? So I have to know all of those for every single set of tools because they're all going to be different and every shop is going to get somewhat familiar with whatever tools they have and that's fine, but you have to know that's your tool and not potentially not the truth, right? The only way I'm really going to know is, you know, if I wrote some patch code and I hand it to you and you have a data logging tool, specifically like an emulator, and you can live show me um, every memory read and write um, from the, from the, in the processor that I can actually see what could potentially be going on and the raw binary values, not whatever your tool pulled over the DLC and then converted to whatever value it thought was supposed to be there. And right? that can and, literally not even come close to happening for the prices that are reasonable for making your truck run with modified injectors. Like the price is tuning cost to make your truck run with modified injectors. Well, and that just, that's you know, this blanket statement of like modified injectors too, right? Like who manufactured them? How do they test them? You know, what equipment do they use to test them? Um, you know, what it, what exact components are they you like expecting to, to put in these fuel injectors for how they're supposed to run? And then, do, are there differences between these injector setups and these vehicles? And, you know, we, we have to account for, you know, six, seven, eight brands of fuel injectors that all test them differently and all build them differently. Yep. Well, that's another big topic. And we're already 20 minutes into this, but what I want to talk about is, I guess, a relationship. I want to talk about a relationship between... Um, injectors and turbos but mainly i want to talk about turbos but we can't talk about turbos unless we talk about their relationship to your what you use your truck for and the fuel injectors that you have and what your expectations for power are there are usually speaking in the context of people who call us wanting or you call email whatever you're looking to to put bigger injectors in your truck of whoever made them whatever um you're looking to put bigger injectors in your truck in your 73 of course because this is mainly a 73 podcast um but it's it's sort of a general statement with diesels but especially 73s when you put modified injector in your truck um you're either going to hope that you can run a billet wheel because that seems like the best idea or you're going to hope that you can run like a bigger drop in turbo so you're going to get the you're going to get the best of the best it's only a hundred bucks to go from a kc stage one to a kc turbo stage three so why not just get a kc stage three it's better because it's bigger right there's kind of two perspectives there um the relationship between fuel 
that you have, the injectors you have, and the turbo that you have is, uh, is incredibly important. So it's, 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 again, it's so hard to, to just give an answer, but the general idea that I, that I present anyway is assuming, of course, that we're going to recommend something like a T4 turbo or a KC turbo because, um, uh, T4 turbo kind of is a another general statement, but um, usually we're going to rec- recommend like an S uh, a Borg Warner uh, SXE lineup charger, something between an S363 SXE and an S369 SXE, where there are two turbine options. You have a 68 millimeter turbine wheel, and you have a 73 millimeter turbine wheel. Almost every single setup that you see it for a T4 kit that sells a T, you know, T4 swap kit with a S300 turbo is going to come with a 73 millimeter turbine wheel because you're not usually asked, but that's normal. Um, the KC turbos, which are, they are the best drop-ins. I will 100% say right now, nobody makes a better drop-in turbo than KC turbos. Do you agree with that, Vaughn, or not? Because I'm going to keep moving on, but I want to know your answer. Um, uh, simply, I don't disagree. Um, I don't. I, I think that's a little too broad of saying for across all drop-ins for everybody's setup, a KC drop-in is what everybody needs. I would disagree. Um, but to say that for people that need a drop-in, most of them uh, would want something. Uh, that KC is going to be the best at offering. Okay, but we're trying to find we're trying to find a space between what we know well, and I what th- we would there's... recommend to somebody who doesn't know. Would so, you recommend a different turbo have... in any scenario than a KC drop in turbo if you were going to buy a drop in turbo? If you were going to buy a drop in turbo, I wouldn't recommend anything but a kc turbo drop-in option okay for any fuel injector size overstock okay yep that yep that's that exact fair? that's what i'm trying to say right. okay so we're, we're pretty set that but i would also say for some people i think honestly a stock turbocharger is okay once you know once the customer is aware of what they're going to be doing with their truck also right right and I think some people shouldn't get a, a modified turbocharger because they may not need it for what they're doing, right? And we're going to talk about this, but I did want to at least preface before we start talking about power levels, I'm personally going to describe it as in certain power ranges as a, as a broad idea of what you're likely going to be wanting out of your truck, what you want it to be doing, and not exactly power numbers, right? And, and those... Uh, as far as expectation goes right and so what what parts can be designed to match for your setup and what power you're actually looking at while you're doing doing the things you need it to be doing so i just wanted to to throw that out there as we start talking about setups and turbos and fuel injectors yeah and would you agree the two main parts to making power are going to be your fuel injectors and your turbo like the two the two big decisions you should not make wrong, I should say, are gonna be your fuel injector yep. and your turbo. Everything else is just you need it to support those two things. Yep. yep. Supporting Most mods. So. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I mean we could argue that's all a diesel engine really is. Yeah, it's fu- it's <laughs> fuel, fuel and injectors air. and it's fuel and air. Yeah. The two things are going to tr- change the way that your truck drives based on what you bought and what your expectations are, are going to be your fuel injection, your turbo. The things that are going to make sure that they work the way that they're intended to for what your setup is or what you expect from your truck um, is the supporting modifications. Does that seem fair? Okay. I would agree. All right. So the two things we see, the like broad spectrum, like like here's one, here's ten. Okay. Uh, you either expect that your stock turbo with, you know, maybe a billet wheel will suffice with larger than stock injectors on your truck. Um, not speaking to supporting mods, just these two important parts. Um, or you 
are you're just like, I want to spend the money. I want to do it once. I want to do it right, which isn't wrong. I get that line of thought. Um, and you just want to get the biggest thing because it's reasonable. It's, you know, a case, a KC turbos stage one is 1140 or $1,150. A KC turbo stage three is $1,240. So 90 to $100 difference. I don't remember what the exact prices are. So you're like, man, like, why not just get the bigger one? You don't move more air, right? Wrong. Why not just stay with a stock turbo? Because if I would just put a billet wheel in it, like that's, I mean, I read about wicked wheels on the forums. That'll work great with my stage one and a half injectors, my 180 30s, right? Wrong. It doesn't work like that. And so my, like, like the way that I would try to explain it, and like, this is hard. This is really hard to do. I'm not scientific. Like I am not a mechanical engineer or a fluid engineer. I'm not any one of those things, but I have a very hard time explaining things without completely explaining them. But I'm going to explain it uh, the way I would say to everybody. When you choose on a, on a diesel, fuel determines how much power you can make. And your turbo determines where you can make power and how e- how, what your effective usable power limit is going to be and where that is going to be. I don't know how to say that differently, but usually I would recommend running a good turbo, of course, but the smallest turbo for a, you know, a daily truck, a tow truck, whatever, what people actually do with their trucks, I would recommend the smallest turbo that will effectively make the power that you're looking to make for what you're intending to do. Not the biggest turbo. And of course we have limitations of like what's actually offered. But that is my my usual statement. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Vaughn? So um, I guess a, a few things being you mentioned like what what are you doing with the truck, right? Like I mentioned earlier, that's that's the most important thing. Um, I think something, like I mentioned power level stuff, cause that's the easiest way I can find myself explaining that. that. And that encapsulates all of the physics, you know, jargon we could go into about why this stuff matters and fuel this and air this and this and that. One thing that I think is important, um, with most people, right? When they come to us, they are expecting that, you know, that they expect their truck's perfectly working order and they go, I just want to make more power, right? Oh, well, the injectors are tired. I think it's important to note that if you're willing to just drop $1,200 or more on a turbo, maybe consider dropping a little bit of money on some other more important parts to go with it too, right? And I know most people are about that, but there are plenty of customers that think, oh, I'll put a KC Stage 3 in it for now and I'll put, you know, 250 100s in it for now and then I'll put all the rest of the parts in later, Right. I care more about everything else because I'm going to be the one handling the phone call when your 250-200s are out of oil at half pedal in a daily tune Um, or your fuel system isn't keeping up because you've never checked fuel pressure its entire existence and, you know, you're going to trash those fuel injectors or something in the near future or just just plain out isn't driving how you want it to. I think it's important to find a balance of what exactly, that's, that's why you come to us, of what you want to do with the truck and what other parts may be just as important, like replacing those gaskets or replacing those harnesses or replacing your up pipes when you do your turbo is a big one, right? And so another discussion of just drop-ins may end up costing you as much money, you know, or, or enough money to put you in the range of a T4 kit when you have to replace your boots and you have to replace your clamps and you have to replace your up pipes and you ha- maybe you want to put a different housing or a collector on it or, you, you, you know, manifold or whatever that's going to be. I know they're just slightly separate, but all of those things are important. And when you bring them to us, we'll try our best to give you as good of all of those options for what you're doing. And now to get back on when I talk about uh, power ranges for what most people are doing, I think the easiest way to sum this up is and encapsulate all of it. And most people have heard me explain it is to say, you know, what, what do you need your truck to do? Let's start with start there. If you just want to drive your truck around to daily drive it, 
or you want to drive it back and forth to work, or you want to tow 12,000 pounds with it on the weekends, or you have 37 inch tires and you also want to tow, you know, a, a work trailer or something with you, or you need that truck to go drive every single day. What you need your truck to do most of the time, in, let's put this in perspective, is make, you know, enough horsepower to idle and also maybe 250 horsepower at the top end, right? That, that's what you need it to do realistically, what you want it to put to the ground, right? And so once we put that into perspective, it's easier for us to say, okay, you need a turbo that's going to match a range from and be good and, and efficient in the range of 10 to 250 horsepower, right? And I know that number sounds really low, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, but if you also want to make 500 horsepower, you need a turbo that's going to be good at making 500 horsepower, or we can say you need to be on a spectrum. What are you doing with the truck? Well, I want it to make 500 horsepower, but I also still need it to make 250 horsepower to daily drive around at. Okay, so what is the best turbo that's going to fit that range? right? That's what we need to choose, right? And so when I had said earlier, some people just need stock turbos, I was kind of pointing at the people that want to put fuel injectors in it and they want to upgrade it, but all they do is drive the truck back and forth to work every day and they want that spool up and they want, you know, to be able to tow, you know, 12,000 pounds and do it fairly reliably. I'm going to tell you, put it in a heavy tow tune or, or a medium tow tune with an EGT gauge and watch it. And your power limit is going to be when that EGT gauge tops out, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can put a, a, a $3,000 turbo in it that's going to drop your EGT gauge about, you know, 200, 300 degrees maybe, okay? And maybe give you another range of 50 or, or 60 horsepower on top of that. But when you're hauling 12,000 pounds, you're really going to be limited to the 300 horsepower range or less, right? Most of the time, yep. almost every tune you're going to get from us. So that's what I think is important for us to, to explain and for customers to look at. So the turbo options you're going to have are going to be where do you need to do with your truck? What kind of power does it need to make in these ranges? And so you understand. And just to finish off my point here of a lot of customers come to us and say, well, I tow 12,000 pounds or 15,000 pounds and I want to do it better. So I need to make more power. Well, I understand that idea, but it's not exactly that simple because, again, if you put 250 100s in it, you think you're making this much more power. But when you put it in the heavy tow tune, you put that truck on a dyno, it's making 250, right? Yep. It's It made you feel like it was making more power because you have bigger fuel injectors and a bigger turbo. But it turns out not only are you out of the range of the turbo efficiency because you got a stage three or a 369 or, a, you know, a S400 series. So you're out of the range, range of the turbo efficiency when you're towing with it in that low horsepower. Um, and so you're not getting, well, not the fuel economy really matters with a setup that big, but you're, you're out of just generally out of the efficiency, uh, of that turbo range. So it's going to feel more sluggish while you're driving it. It's probably going to smoke more. You're going to get poorer fuel economy. It's going to be rough on takeoffs, you know, depending on what transmission you go with, you're going to have, um, you know, your schedules are going to be a little bit mixed up from how you, what you want it to be. And that's going to be hard to dial in without live tuning it. And, you know, all of those things get very difficult to explain after the fact because all of those things go together. How you drive it? Are you towing up hills? What torque converter do you mm -hmm. have? What what trans What tires do you, do you have? Do you actually tow What's that? What's your often? altitude? Like, what are you used to? Have you owned your truck for the last you know twenty five years? Because that's the difference. Has it been stock for twenty five years while you've owned it? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. I mean, okay, since I, I sort of outlined what customers may want to expect for what turbo setup for the fuel injector, and this since this isn't a topic about fuel injectors specifically, but you have the idea of what fuel injector is going to make what power, so then we match a turbo with that power, you know, and I've sort of, sort of said my piece about what turbos for those power levels, then what do you say for when somebody asks you, when they come to you and say, what turbo do I want for this setup? What would be your answer for how I'd lay that out? I think the general answer, and like we have to be kind of general, and if you want less than general, you're going to have to fill out a build plan. There we go, back to that, and talk about <laughs> it. Um, the general answer is going to be, if your intention is simply to tow with your truck, if all you want, if all you do is tow with your truck, or if the main thing you care about what it does is tow well, then you're probably going to care about uh, two things. You're going to care about the fact that 
It's going to be very nice and responsive when you take off, which is going to be determined by your turbo, not your injectors. And you're going to care about, can I do 65 miles an hour pulling this grade? Can I do 55 miles an hour pulling this grade? Can I do 85 miles an hour pulling this grade? And those are completely, like Vaughn mentioned earlier, those are completely two different opposite ends of the spectrum. How your truck takes off and whether or not you can maintain speed pulling whatever weight you tow are not the same. And the turbo that's going to help you do one or the other is probably going to be a different turbo. But the general idea is this, and this is this is why I said earlier, like I always want to try to pick of good turbos. I want to try to pick the smallest turbo that will clean up the fuel or take care of the fuel or make the power, however you want to say it, what we're looking to make, not the biggest, because it is usually going to drive the best. If you take an if you take like let's say let's say you know 18030 what what do you have on you've got like 18030s you got oh, full yes. force 18030s and S369 good... in your truck right with 37 inch tires yeah and... so i was yeah i was actually going to if you don't mind i was going to tell that exact story of daily driving 37 inch tires i do have 410 gears with help helps a bit um i later model st- uh, stock stall converter uh S369 SXE with a uh 10 housing and a 73 millimeter wheel um, and a 2000 to 2100, 2200 RPM, uh, you know, turbo range mm-hmm. where, you know, it starts making power and we could call that whatever you want, spool up, whatever. Right. But I've had customers say, oh, 1600 RPM, that's way too late for me. Right. And I'm, I'm going, oh yeah, two, 2200 RPM is where it's at. Right. And that's yep. difference being that's silly. Uh, and to me, it seemed normal, and that's the way I built it. And obviously, I've had well, lots and lots and lots and lots of hours building it and tuning it and everything, so it's different for me. And I can also still tow with it, and I can daily drive it in the exact same tune, right? We've talked about that a lot. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that for anybody else. Like your your favorite setup being, you know, two thirty eight eighties or two fifty one hundreds with a three sixty four and daily drive it, right? And yeah, totally different spectrums, and I, I you know, I've, I've said this on the podcast previously. I wouldn't recommend my setup to everybody um, because so, certain things about it are kind of silly. But uh, yeah, <laughs> for you being able to drive around the fact that you know what that truck is going to act like is fine, and it's and it's good. Sure. It's better. It's better than stock for you, right? Absolutely, I love every second of it, and I've I've been able to keep it as clean as a stock truck pretty much everywhere, and nearly as responsive as a stock truck pretty much everywhere also. Right, um, but you can't do that for a everybody, lot of which is why we could never recommend that setup for everybody or anybody for that matter. Exactly. Literally, no one is ever going to call me and get me to tell them that a three sixty nine and two or you know one eighty thirties are going to be a good idea. <laughs> like, not a soul is ever going. No, they're not going to get that answer. From either one of us. No. Um, no, absolutely. I, I would never tell anybody that either, right? And there's a reason I have the injector size and the turbo size I have, right? I've, I've driven plenty and, and set up plenty of vehicles of different setups. But for me and what I do with the vehicle and still being able to drive it every single day if I needed to, you know, mm-hmm. it's a totally different story of how impract- impractical, I suppose, my setup may be. And again, I would never recommend it to anybody else, you know, to how practical some other setup can be and what you're looking for, right? Yep. What I was looking for is way different than what I think everybody else is looking for also. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, man, I can think back to, I can think back to a lot of things. One of the things was I remember years and years ago, um, Duramax Tuner had put together like a video of like, and I, and I'm like now, now that I understand the perspective and I guess I have for a while, but like it, it, I've thought about this several times. Um, they put together a video of like like talking about like they set an EGT cap, if I remember right. They set an EGT cap, and they said if if we can we can tune this truck on our dyno to maintain less than 1200 degrees, how long does it take to get from you know this horsepower to this horsepower um, within that limit, or how long does it take to get from idle to the max horsepower we can make in you know this within that EGT range. Topic flow. What's that? 
as this is a really good topic flow, something I wanted to lead into. So. Yeah. And now, I mean, I, I think, and they, this was, this was probably, I don't know, it's probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago, but I remember that before I really cared about any of this. Right. Um, and that was just such a good, I think that they led to a point where they could explain something really well. And I absolutely were, we're going to do that. Like we're, once we get past all of our dino problems, I don't even know if I brought this up in the podcast in the past. We've got a really nice super flu dino. We built a big trailer for it. We did all this stuff and we're just having big problems with it. But um, once that's done, like I am just so excited to be able to try to give like data. I want to give really good data on these things we're talking about because we can, I can, you know, either one of us can sit down and tell you a really good answer um, after we have a conversation and figure out what you're looking for and yada, 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 all the stuff we talked about. But it's really hard to make that like sellable to where you'll understand it and do it and not make the wrong choices without proving it, if you will. Like, I feel like, I feel like we need to prove it. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's all you. Yeah, no, for sure. But as going back to exactly the topic that that the thing you mentioned about uh, how long it takes to make this power with these limitations, right? Something that needs to be said about uh, a, a topic, or at least something that that customers and we see a lot on forums or social media of saying, "Well, I decided to pick this turbo. Now I need to pick this injector setup to match it." Uh, well, I just need more fuel, right? Oh, this turbo's not spooling. I just need more fuel. I just need more fuel. I just need more fuel. It's not that simple, and the simple answer of trying to explain why that's not simple is to say, you're you're not going from 0 to 600 horsepower when your pedal goes from 0% straight to 100% pedal. And for the people that drive like that, they know what their truck's going to do. But for most people that don't drive like that and rolling into the accelerator or you have your foot has to move from zero to 100 and there will be some time electronically where that's going to be important, right? Your truck's not making 600 horsepower on command with, you know, your injector setup most likely. And for whoever is listening that disagrees with me, you know why, I dis- why you would disagree with me and that's fine. For the people that are trying to understand what I'm saying here, th- this is important why you wouldn't just pick an injector setup that's going to give you more fuel to match the turbo, right? Because you're not driving your truck up and down the street at 500 horsepower everywhere. You're not, right? You're driving it up and down the street anywhere from 50, 100, 120, 200 horsepower, right? You're, you, that's what you're driving your truck in most of the time. So it still needs to drive good in those ranges. Just adding, you know, and from the tuning perspective, your fuel injectors may be capable of doing that, but you're not going to find your tuner in the world that's going to give you, unless you do it yourself, I suppose. And by all means, feel free to, to test it yourself and then you understand where I'm coming from. That's going to give you 500 horsepower the second you step in, into the pedal, right? And I know this is silly, but it's important for me to make this statement because I think it's broad enough that you'll understand, or at least people listening hopefully understand, why a fuel injector setup that you put with your turbo, you don't just add more fuel to match the turbo, right? You don't just make your truck make 500 horsepower everywhere to fix the problem of your laggy turbo, right? You fix the problem of why your turbo wasn't set for what you're doing with it, right? And I know that sucks to hear for people that picked up a Stage 3 or a S400 series or whatever turbo that you thought was going to be what you wanted, right? Or a really big turbine or people that want to put compounds on their truck because they think it's going to fix both of those problems. Um... And I don't want to discourage anybody from playing around. If you want to go down that road, know that we're probably not going to be able to help you if you want to go that far, right? But um, for the people that understand what we we're trying to do and trying to help you and don't want to just go crazy because they feel like it and still want our help at the end of the day, that's the, the point being picking the turbo setup and the fuel injector setup for what you do with the vehicle think that's probably the the way i can wrap that up of just yeah there's a reason why there's a, a good pairing that we can give you for for both setups for what you're doing so not i just uh, we i don't want to say something that's actually useful since most of this is just like non-answers um and i'll start but what is your 
if somebody calls you looking for the best towing setup on their truck, like all I do is tow 18,000 pounds, sometimes 25. Yeah, I know it's overweight. What do you recommend? Do you want to start? I guess I well, say, for, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I, I just, I, I'd like to start, I suppose. And probably because you're going to be easier doing damage control about what I'm about to say. So I would tell somebody, since most of the time with pretty much any injector setup you're going to put in the truck, I'm going to give you a tune because you're towing overweight that I'm going to tell you first off that I'm probably not going to be able to support you. You're going to run into problems and I can't help you. Okay. That's first thing first. After that, the heavy tow tune I'm going to tell you to run in is for almost every injector setup is going to be stock horsepower level. Okay. So unfortunately you just spent $2,000 or whatever or more on your fuel injector setup. And it turns out you're making the same power as stock. No, right? I want to know. That's the simplest. Way. I want to know not being hypothetical, what you would tell somebody the best choice would be for them if that was their scenario. If you want me to hear you say it, the answer of you're making stock horsepower, I would tell somebody to stick with stock fuel injectors. Okay. That works. That's fine. My recommendation in that scenario would be exactly the same thing. Not only because you're not going to really end up making more power, because you probably won't. You won't reliably anyway um, without... All of the issues that can come along with everything else, you know, with modifying your truck. Um, you're not going to make more power. And you lose the reliability of being able to go buy a replacement injector at O'Reilly's if you have to. Which I would never recommend. But if you count on your truck to, to run every day. Then keeping it running every day at any cost is important and having to wait to get a replacement injector from somewhere, you know, uh, a thousand miles away is probably not a good choice. So picking up another 10 miles per hour, pulling your trailer probably isn't worth it. Does that seem fair? And I think something else, absolutely. And just one other thing right in there of saying that you can pick up a stock part or replacement part to replace that with that goes obviously with every part. But for your fueling system, that's kind of important too, right? If you're making a lot more horsepower, that fuel pump you might go replace it with, you can't anymore because you've had to put a fuel system in it or you've had to put a high-pressure oil pump to keep up with your fuel injector setup. And if that fails on the road, you're putting a stock in. or You're, you know, you're putting something that isn't enough for your modified setup in. And we also get a lot of customers that are calling us very upset about something or they want tuning ASAP or their shops are waiting or something's really important because they need tuning to run their 180-30s. Mm -hmm right and it, I, whether that's important or not because we could have a whole discussion of why it matters but doesn't matter at all if you don't run tuning at all on your your fuel injector setup yes i said it but that takes all of your frustration and stress out if you don't need the power or you don't want the power let's put it that way and you have the oem components now you don't have to worry about tuning at all worst case scenario you pull the chip out forget about it and it's a stock truck again and yep. you know that's the simplest way if you want to tr have your truck reliable and you use it every day. Yep. Absolutely. That's the best I can tell. Absolutely. You and that's the case. Like even with like the, I guess, I don't know. We're running out of time. We only got about five minutes left. I want to keep this under an hour, but a couple of things I want to say, if you have an OBS truck and you're replacing injectors, go ahead and put AC code injectors in it. Put one sixty zero AC code injectors in it because Without tuning, it will run exactly like stock, but it gives you a lot more headroom to make power if you want to. It's your choice at that point. Anything from stock all the way to, you know, mid to high 300s if you want it. And if you have supporting mods. So do that. Yes, that makes sense. Go ahead and upgrade at that point. But on a Super Duty, um, and if all you do is tow, and you do not want problems, and you're not okay with your truck being down... Do not upgrade your injectors. It's not worth it. That is that is always going Maybe to be my opinion. Maybe replace them because they'll have high miles on them or they'll be worn out or they'll be leaky or something. Definitely consider replacing them. I would never discourage anybody from doing that because you're probably going to get that 20 or 30 horsepower or whatever it is you lost and the couple miles per gallon that you lost and your hard starts and your leaking and your check engine lights and all of that's going to go away. But absolutely you have the benefit of you know you're still making as efficient as you were factory most of the way around mm -hmm. 
We can usually get way better fuel economy out of factory split shots, and that's a long story, but it's usually what happens. And the modified fuel injector setups from whatever company that you may be dealing with, you're not going to be getting a replacement part for that safely, effectively, nearby. Um, and also, potentially, if you didn't purchase you know, brand new Alliant AC codes... You may be dealing with remanufactured components that are going to be doing it slightly differently. And so if you purchase from a company that's rebuilding them, you may not be able to just go grab an AC code from whatever dealer may be near you and drop it in. You may still have balance problems or all kinds of stuff that can get out of whack that you'd still need to have that addressed. You can't just put a different fuel injector in I, that doesn't match. I want to throw forever. this in there real quick. My only point in saying that you can buy replacement injectors other places, and, and, and I'll say this too, I recommend AC code injectors to OBS people every time. Basically every time. Maybe there's an edge case where that's not true, but usually. Um, if you even want just want stock injectors, because they are supposed to be a standard, and especially if you're on stock tuning, probably won't matter. But buying injectors from any different manufacturer are always going to be different. Will it hurt anything? Honestly, if it's a stock truck, probably not. If you're just, if literally all you care about is keeping it running, it probably won't matter. Um, but, but yeah, I, I do, I do agree with you on most of that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's the best way to cap that off. And there's one little thing I do want to say a bit about that of if people are listening to this, they're more than likely looking at their vehicle because they want to do some modifications away from stock. Either they believe that Ford maybe screwed up something that they want to replace and they just want to make it more reliable. I'm going to probably side on the case of we're probably not going to make it any more reliable than Ford did from the factory. Like there's some things, right, we could probably talk you into doing, but you're also doing it yourself or you know maybe a shop that's hopefully familiar with it and you're buying components from a store that you can't pick up at a dealer anywhere and there's very limited help on who's going to help you install it teach you how it works or anything like that too so the farther you get away from stock it may make you feel more comfortable you just want to make it better unfortunately i don't think we have or anybody in my opinion is going to have truthfully that solution for you yep well, and especially anything that deviates extremely from stock, um, it's not, it's not, I guess without looking up the definition of the words, I, I'll just try to explain it the best way I can. Um, reliability, the way that I understand it, just as a general term, probably not the definition term, just the way I understand it, would be something that does not have problems. Like in the, in the case of a vehicle, you're expecting, I want, and then this is sad too. I, and I Man, we're going to go down a rabbit trail. But, you know, I, I make it a very, I explicitly say every time as much as I can, no amount of money you ever spend on your truck, I don't care how much money you're willing to spend for reliability, for the sake of reliability. You cannot buy it. It's not possible. The best thing you can do for reliability, if, if that's what you're asking, is to not touch it. Because everything you touch um, could become a problem, whether it even be OEM parts, and everything you modify, especially, you put a chip in it. I don't know, maybe you didn't clean it right. Maybe your PCM has problems. Maybe the chip has problems. Maybe the hex code isn't right in your tuning. Maybe a thousand things. Like, it's endless. There's so many things that could happen. You buy your parts at O'Reilly's. Like I mentioned them earlier. You buy your stuff that isn't, like, to OEM spec. Like, there, there really isn't or shouldn't be uh, anything better than OEM parts. For, from a reliability standpoint, keep your truck running. And from a diagnostic standpoint, um, if reliability is all you're after, then uh, it's really hard to recommend doing anything other than stock. And there's. I do want to say, like, with touching stuff, though, 
Uh, definitely recommend replacing parts, right? Don't just leave it alone if you think you have 270,000 miles on it. You've never had a problem. You probably have more problems than you yeah. think. No, I, I meant so upgrading. Be aware I'm that, sorry. I said that wrong. No, I know you. I know what you meant. I just wanted to make it clear to everybody listening. Yeah, you're right. I was I I said that wrong, but uh, I guess I don't, I don't know. This this is the, the they're rabbit trails. They can go for days. That's the problem. So I'm I'm bad at, I'm bad at rabbit trailing. We all know that. Um, but the general gist is, if you are going to upgrade your injectors, then I would usually recommend just calling us. And I, and I say us because you're listening to this, so it matters. Uh, I also will say I recommend buying your parts from us because um, thousands, literally thousands of people do this. They fill out build plans or they call us talking about the stuff. Um, and then we go over everything. We decide on parts. We talk about their build. We talk about all this stuff in detail with you, specifically the person who needs an answer. And we, we decide and explain what that answer should be, what what that would look like, what parts you need, um, and then you buy parts somewhere else. And, uh, you know, we do this for free, but, you know, it's not really free. It's free in that we hope that we can help people that'll buy stuff from us. So to exit this podcast, I absolutely would love your business. That is 100% truth. And I absolutely would love to give good advice. So we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to produce this podcast. I can't say that it'll probably get like a lot more technical, but hopefully soon we will be able to produce better YouTube videos that are more technical, uh, going into detail on things that'll matter. And if you're looking for that, check out our YouTube channel. 